In this problem, I want to verify this identity given here. Remember, we should never work on both sides at the same time. We should just transform one side into the other. And it doesn't matter if we start on the left-hand side and prove equals the right-hand side or vice versa. However, we should always keep an eye on where we're going. So looking at this problem, it's kind of hard to know where to start because we normally start on the more complicated side. Well, if you look at this one, the left-hand side and the right-hand side look equally complicated. And when you look at this problem, in fact, there is a nice hint on how to do this problem. If you look on the left-hand side, the denominator is 1 minus sine theta. On the right-hand side, the numerator is 1 plus sine theta. If you ever get a situation like this where you get conjugates, remember conjugates are two terms with the opposite sign between them, you always want to multiply numerator and denominator of one side by the conjugate. And why do we do this? Well, if I quickly write 1 minus sine theta and multiply it by 1 plus sine theta, and I'm going to do this the long way with FOIL. So let's FOIL it out. First term, 1 times 1 is 1. Outer, 1 times sine theta is plus sine theta. Inner, minus sine theta times 1 is minus sine theta. And last term is negative sine theta times sine theta is negative sine squared theta. And whenever you multiply conjugates, because they are conjugates, the inner two terms will always cancel out and you will get 1 minus sine squared theta. You'll get the difference of two squares, this term squared minus that term squared. So now we know that, let's just start working on this problem. So I'm going to take the left-hand side, which is cosine theta over 1 minus sine theta. And I want to multiply the denominator by the conjugate of this denominator. So I need to multiply the denominator by 1 plus sine theta. And if you multiply the denominator by 1 plus sine theta, you have to do the exact same thing to the numerator. Because what am I really multiplying by? 1 plus sine theta over 1 plus sine theta is equal to 1. So now my numerator is cosine theta times 1 plus sine theta. And at this point, a lot of students get tempted to distribute that cosine theta into the parentheses. The reason we don't is looking at where we want to go, we need a 1 plus sine theta left in the numerator. And now I've already proved when I multiply the two denominators, I'm going to get 1 minus sine squared theta. So now look where I'm trying to go. I'm going to leave this part alone. I want the 1 plus sine theta. And somehow I have to reduce this with something in the denominator and just land up with cosine theta. Well, hopefully by now you're very used to the Pythagorean identity. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So my denominator is 1 minus sine squared theta. So if I subtract sine squared theta from both sides, I get 1 minus sine squared theta is cosine squared theta. So now my denominator I can write as just cosine squared theta. And now I imagine you can see that this cosine theta is going to reduce with one of these. Just to prove it to you, I'm going to rewrite it with my denominator instead of cosine squared theta, I'm going to write cosine theta times cosine theta. 
this reduces with this. I can reduce this cosine theta because it's a factor of my numerator. This cosine theta is a factor of my denominator. So I'm allowed to reduce factors between numerator and denominator. And I get 1 plus sine theta over cosine theta. Is that what you're trying to prove? You have the right hand side you are done. You proved the left-hand side equaled the right-hand side.